All right, here we go. Question number six in our college algebra homework number five in my lab math says to determine the oblique asymptote of the graph of the function. All right, first things first. Oblique, the, another word to say that is slant. So if they say find the oblique asymptote, it's the same thing as saying find the slant asymptote. And now what I'm about to say is important. I hope you're listening. In order for there to be an oblique asymptote, the degree of the top has to exceed the degree of the bottom by exactly one. So the degree of the top is three, the degree of the bottom is two, three is bigger than two by exactly one, and therefore there will be a slant asymptote. There will be an oblique asymptote. And then the next question is, once you know that there's going to be one, how do you find it? Well, up here in this box, it shows that we're going to have to do long division to find the oblique asymptote. And if you're not too good on long division, you may want to pay attention because I'm going to show you how to crank this out. Here we go. The first step in long division is to figure out how many times x squared will divide into x cubed, okay? In other words, if I do x to the third divided by x squared, what will that leave me with? Well, that leaves me an x. x to the third divided by x squared is x, and notice that I line that up with the negative 16x. That's because I like to keep my like terms lined up. The next step, once you figure out what this is up here, we're going to distribute to all three terms of the divisor, okay? All three terms out front are going to get multiplied by x. Here we go. x times x squared, x to the third, and these two should match because we designed it that way. Next, x times 3x is a positive 3x squared, x times negative 4, that is a negative 4x. Okay, so far so good. Now, when I draw the line, I've got to change the signs. Get that? It's super easy. Draw the line, change the signs, and then combine. x cubed minus x cubed, those cancel. I've got a negative 1x squared and a negative 3x squared gives me a negative 4x squared. I've got negative 16 plus 4. That is a negative 12x. And then the 18 can come down. And then we're going to rinse and repeat. Okay, so now again, I need to know what is negative 4x squared divided by x squared. These have to divide now. Negative 4x squared divided by x squared, that's negative 4. And then I would go ahead and distribute and blah, 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 all that stuff. But since I'm finding uh, an asymptote, the oblique asymptote, I don't actually have to finish this long division problem. All I have to do is get the quotient. I don't care what the remainder is. I've got the quotient. And now I know that the slant asymptote, the oblique asymptote, is going to be y equals x minus 4. That, I mean, that's as far as you got to go to get the slant asymptote. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to my Desmos, and I'm going to prove it. Okay, let's prove that we have the right answer. So putting in my function, we've got x to the third minus x squared minus 16x uh, plus 18 over squared plus 3x minus 4 and if we look at that function if we drag it around whoo look at that mm, that is an exciting looking function but what I want you to notice is that there's like it looks like a line could fit right in here and that's going to be our slant asymptote so let's see if we got the right answer when I graph this line, it should fit nicely right in here if it's correct. Y equals X minus 4. Bam! Look at how that fits right in there. 
And so that makes me feel good about my slant asymptote. Now notice that they, in my lab math, they already have the y equals. So all I need to put is the x minus 4. And check it, and we're done. Man, I hope that was helpful and a little exciting. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.